Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Beautiful day out there, and it's warming up too. So we're going to have a beautiful day. Snow tonight, though, isn't it, Jerry? I think so. Yeah. You better be stocked up. All you folks from Robbinsville, <laughs> it snows over there when it don't snow nowhere else. <laughs> Amen. Well, we got a lot of going on. Uh, Rose mentioned this morning that if we wanted to go ahead and have that Christmas thing right after the morning worship, that'd be okay because she didn't think that Frank was going to be able to make it anyway. So, so uh, I guess I need to open up the door so we can vote on it. Uh, I hear a motion to open the doors. Second. Uh, well, uh, do we want to leave it at four o'clock or do we want to move it up? And just have it right after church is over. Right. Yeah, it could be snowing that evening. Yeah. You never know. Of course, it could be snowing that morning. <laughs> But uh, if somebody make a motion, we'll. All right. Second. Everybody in favor? Raise your hand. All right. We'll do it right after church then. On the 20th. On the 20th. Uh, I talked to Robert Duckworth. He's going to come and tune the piano. But he said, it being on the outside wall, that we need to buy one of those chaser bars that keeps the moisture out of it in order for it to stay in tune. Is it out of tune? Yeah. We had it tuned. It's out of, it, it, it's out of tune again. So He's not going to charge us for tuning. He said we would have to, or we needed to, buy one of those chaser bars. How much are they? Uh, I don't know, probably around $50. Maybe a little more since everything got higher, but yeah. I think we can get one around $50. I'll call this week and check and see what the prices are on it. But it was, uh, yeah, it's about $50 for that. Yeah. 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 Bring it back next Sunday, but, but uh, I'll take the prices on them this week, and if they're not over $50, then I'll give it to you. Uh, yeah, I don't have a motion to do that. Second. Okay. Because uh, you ain't long with our singing start back up, and we'll. Probably have people that wants to play a piano, you know. So we need to get it shaped before singing season starts. Let's see, it starts what, May? Have you got the list of groups with you? Or, no. Uh, call me sometime this week and uh, let me know who's going to be here each month. Okay. That way I can let Barbara know that she's getting on the radio when it's time. Well, that's all business. I have anybody else got anything to bring up? Okay, well, I hear a motion to close the doors for business. Second. All right. Anybody else got anything to say or do or <coughs> testimony? Or praise report? Oh yeah, next Sunday at five o'clock over at Lighthouse Church, they're gonna be having their Christmas play, and uh, Tammy's put the play together. 
going to be directing it. I'm going to be in it. I think Beth's going to be in it. Anybody wants to come, they're more than welcome. It's next Saturday. Sunday at 12? Five. Five, yeah. <laughs> Five o'clock. And if anybody don't know where the church is, you go past Eagles to the red light, and turn right on Myers Chapel Road, and you go past the golf course. No. You go past the campground. Oh, yeah, yeah, you go past the golf course. Yeah. You go past the campgrounds, and the church is on your right. It's a little white church. Oh, wait. On the left. <laughs> Are you sure you want to get that? Yeah, thank God for my wife. She keeps me straight. But the church is on the left. If you go to the golf course, you've gone too far. Just turn around and come back. I knew God had a reason for women. Amen. To keep us men straight. <laughs> the wife has the most important job of anybody. I'll tell it. And then our get together will be on the 20th, right after church. And then Dwayne's having New Year's singing. That's going to be on Thursday, January the 31st. And it's going to run from 8 to midnight. And I know a lot of us can't drive during the night, so but if you want to come, you're more than welcome to. And you'll be at the same place the Christmas play is. But uh, think about it. If God leads you to come, come. If you can't drive at night, we'll get somebody to drive you home. <laughs> oh. That's all the announcements, I reckon. Anybody got a testimony this morning? Well, I'm glad I'm saved. Glad I'm on my way to heaven. And I'm glad that God sent me here. I think he sent me for a reason. I don't know what that reason is, but I I know he had a reason if he sent me here. Amen. <laughs> Brother Daniel, you want to take up the offer? Father, we thank you again, Lord, for giving us another day, another opportunity to be here this morning. We thank you, bless you. 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 Me too. <laughs> well, as we come to you this morning, God, I just pray that we could bless this service. Lord, bless the songs that are sung. Lord, bless the message, Lord. Bless the one that brings a message, Lord. I need your help this morning, Lord, as always. Father, I pray for Sister Barbara and her family, Lord, that you would bless them, along with all the others I mentioned before. Lord, I'm sorry I didn't mention her before. But Lord, you know my heart and my mind. My mind's not good anymore. Father, I just pray, Lord, that you would take care of it. I'm leaving it in your hands. Father, just bless this service, Lord, if there's one here, Lord, that's lost. God, I pray this will be there, Lord, if they would come to know you. <laughs> Father, there's no better time than right now. And Father, what you do here today, Lord, we care for honor and praise, praise you. 
and worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, I have drifted so far from the fold. I beg forgiveness once more. Like a sheep standing out in the cold, I stand alone at God's door. Please be my friend, Lord, and bid me come in. I'm tired and weary and sore. Longing to find perfect peace for my soul, I stand alone at God's door. Lord, I have wasted a lifetime, I know, and I've called on you before. Trust me this once and I won't let you down. I stand alone at God's door. Please be my friend, Lord, and bid me come in. I'm tired and weary and sore, longing to find perfect peace for our soul. I stand alone at God's door. I am determined to make a new start. I don't need sin anymore. My only need is God's love in my heart. That's why I stand at God's door. Please be my friend, Lord, and bid me come in. I'm tired and weary and so Longing to find perfect peace for my soul. I stand alone at God's door. I stand alone at God's door. Well, we'll get into the message. Turn with me to Psalms. Chapter 91. The song stands for the reading of God's Word. Psalms 91, starting in verse 1. <laughs> he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge. My fortress, my God, in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall overcome thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the hour, arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall be no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder. The young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. 
he shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will be I will deliver him and will honor him. With long life I sh will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Fathers, we come to you this morning, Lord, we ask Lord God that you would take control of this message, Lord. Father, give me the word, Lord, that you'd have me to say this morning. Father, I just pray, Lord, that everyone in our midst, Lord, this morning is saved. Father, I pray, Lord, if there's anyone watching on Facebook, Lord, or listening on the radio, Lord, it's not saved, Lord. Speak to their heart. Send conviction upon them, Lord. Father, that this should be the hour, Lord, that they would come to the throne of mercy. Father, they accept you as Lord and Savior. All these things I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. He shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. You know, it don't matter what we're going through. God's promise to us is He's going to see us through it. God is always going to be there. You know, we lost. Aaron Wilburn, who was last week, great gospel singer. He traveled with the Wilburns for many years. And he caught COVID and while he was in the hospital had a heart attack. And he was promoted. He got his heavenly reward. God was watching after him. Well, you might say, well, how was he watching after him if he died? God took him home. So God was watching after him. And God had a reason for him to go. If it hadn't been his time, he'd still be here. It was his time to go. If he didn't have COVID, he probably would still have that heart attack. But God was watching after him. And when, when it was his time to go, he went. And they was rejoicing in heaven for another one of his children made it home. Now, a lot of people say, well, I can't see that God's watching after somebody if they died. Brother Oliver died. He made things right with God before he died. God watched after him. Took care of him. Till it was his time to go. When it was his time to go, he went. I've got enough faith in God that I know that He's going to 
keep me from getting this coat that runs. Now, too, he's given me enough sense, common sense, to know that when I'm in a large crowd, put a mask on. Even though I can't breathe in one on, I still put one on. If I'm going to be in a crowd of, say, 100, 200, 300, especially people I don't know, I'm going to put one on. And I'm going to wear it. I'm going to have to go outside every now and then and pull it down so I can catch my breath. And I'm going to wear it. When I went to Brother Oliver's funeral, I wore a mask because I was mingling with people that I hadn't seen in a long time. And some I didn't even know. But God gives us common sense to take care of ourselves. Now I know Rose has got some breathing problems. When she puts her mask on, she can't get her breath. That's okay. I believe God's going to give her special attention so she won't have to wear no mask. I believe that. Amen. But Psalm 91 tells us God is going to take care of us. That is one of his promises. And you know what? God don't break a promise. They can promise in that Bible that God's going to go. If he said it, he's going to do it. I like the old saying, he said it, I believe it, that settles it. That settles it whether I believe it or not, but still, I like the old saying, God said it, I believe it, that settles it. Ain't no question. Brother Dwayne drives a mail truck. And he's around with a lot of people. And there's a lot of postal workers getting the virus. They are. But I don't think he's ever had one on. I've never seen him with one on. But he's got enough faith in God that he's going to take care of it. We all need that faith. But if we got that much of faith, I believe God's going to honor it. Amen? Now if I walk around, well, I believe he's going to do what's best for me. That's not really faith. That's just more or less hoping he's but by, by, by saying it with that attitude, that's more or less just hoping that God's gonna take care of me. If you say God is gonna take care of me, and you believe that with all your heart, that's what I'm saying. You believe that. God's gonna honor you. Amen. You know, there's mornings, especially these cold mornings, when I get up out of bed, I have to hold on to something when I walk. Because my knees are not to walk on it. Well, they ain't now. But uh, there's a lot of times that I get up in the morning, especially on a cold morning. I get up and I have to hold on to something to walk through the house. God's taking care of me because at one time I was in a wheelchair. I couldn't walk at all. God brought me out of it. I woke up one morning and I pulled myself up in the, up in the bed and, and put my feet out on the floor. And they just felt different. I can't explain it. I used to keep my wheelchair right beside the bed before when I got up, I could hold on to it and pull myself up and get in the chair. 
that morning my feet when they touched the floor. It's just like a new feeling. It was an old feeling, but it was new because it's been so long since I felt that feeling. It felt like a new feeling. Then the church, and I pushed myself up. I didn't fall. I was able to stand. Took a step out. It worked. Took another step. It worked. Now I was staggering. I wasn't walking like I'm walking right now. I mean, I was staggering. I was able to walk. I didn't do that. I had no. I have no control over what my legs do. None of us do. It's all because of God. God gives us things that we take for granted every day. I'm able to breathe. I can't breathe as deep as I once did, but I can breathe. God took care of me. That wheelchair was sitting over in the corner and got dust piled all over it. But I ain't touched it. Since 2000, what was it, Danny? 2007, 2008? I thought they have to get a chisel to get the dust off of it. It's been sitting there so long. But I thank God every morning that I'm not in that wheelchair no more. I can walk. And I'm good at stumbling. I can stumble. Sometimes my legs get just like rubber. I mean, it's all I can do to stand on. But I'm still standing. I'm not. I'm not dependent on that chair. I learned to put my dependence something better. Someone better. Like that song I'm reading now. I'm nobody. I'm trying to tell something. I'm trying to tell everybody about somebody. The somebody. The one that has control over everything. Whether we realize it or not. He has control of our eyesight hearing, our strength in our hands, our strength in our legs. You know, when you got diabetes, sometimes your toes, they give you a fit. Mine gets none. Now, Tammy's, she about comes out of the chair with her and her so bad. When you it affects different people in different ways. Mine stays numb all the time. I can't feel my toes. But they're there for a reason. You know, if you don't have no toes, it's very hard to walk. Because your toes has got a lot to do with your body. Something that little has that much control over the way you stand or the way you walk. That's probably why I stumble so much, because my toes are numb. I don't know that, but that's probably why. But God is in control of every part of my body. He's in control of everything. He's Brother Oliver died. God was in control. God knew it was his time. And he took it. I, I pray that he had a, a, a peace.
peaceful woman. I don't know that. I'm, I'm, I pray that you do. I know that I watched my mother die. And I watched Lorraine die. And when both of them died, the minute they stopped breathing, there was tears rolling down their eyes. You know what I believe that was? I believe that's when he was saying the Lord. I really believe that. That's when they sing the Lord. And those tears come down their eyes after they stop breathing. It is One had all, well, both of them did. They had Alzheimer's. Neither one of them knew they were in the world when they died. They just laid there. But it is such a comfort to see somebody in their frame of mind pass. I never thought I could stand watching my mother die. But I got such a peace in my heart. There with sitting there holding her hand to take her last breath. And I seen no tears. And they were right. That was a peaceful feeling. Know that she was in the arms of Jesus. Looking on this thing. Same way with Lorraine. I wasn't holding her hand, but I was in the room. She died peacefully, just like my mother did. Tears coming down her cheeks after her life's breath. saying that trying to make nobody feel uncomfortable because we was talking about ghosts and stuff before church this morning <laughs> and I don't want to make nobody uncomfortable but death is not a scary thing death is one of the best things that can happen to any of us especially if we're ready If God tarries his coming, then it's my time to go. I hope and pray that I'm standing behind this pulpit trying to preach God's word. And it's my time to go. Of course, now the rapture could take place in any moment, and that would be fine. You know, the Bible says the dead in Christ shall rise first. I wouldn't mind standing, be standing right here when them graves started busting open. I mean, it's all going to happen in the twinkling of an eye. You probably wouldn't even realize, have time to realize what's going on. And I'd love to be standing here looking out through the windows when the rapture takes place. Sitting grave burst open. Because once them grave burst open, I'm going to. Praise the Lord. We're all going. What a place to be, sitting here worshiping God, our Savior, our Lord and Savior.
I believe with all my heart. This is one of God's promises. Like I said earlier, God don't break promises. God's going to watch over us. And he's going to take care of us. How many believe that today? How many believe that God's going to take care of us? I believe that. Just as much as I believe that Jesus went to the cross and died for my sin. I believe that he's going to take care of us because that's one of his promises. I hope God gives me a message on more of his promises one day. But God's promise is something that we will. As old saying goes, you can take it to the bank because it's going to happen. We might get the COVID. But if we do, I believe it would be like Sister Tanner was. Right? You didn't be sick for a day or two. You'll be fine. That's the way Tanner was. God was really watching after her. I would say if a person that's with child would be more apt to get real bad. I don't know that, but you would think so because their immune system is down anyway because they've got extra life living with them. Their immune system's got to be down a little. So I would say that in most cases, that somebody that's pregnant gets COVID, he's going to take them down in a bad way. But God was watching over town. I believe that's all my heart. God was watching over David and Stephen. They was there in the house with her. And uh, Jason. And none of them was sick. Ola said she was around her the day she found out she had it. They didn't get sick. God was watching over us. And if we keep that faith that he'll do that, he'll honor it. I believe that on the heart.